If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Is that the right hand glove? It was a trial that transfixed the nation. The O.J. Simpson murder case was the first true reality show. A real life soap opera with a cast of characters who became household names. I, I heard a thumping noise. My life changed overnight. The witnesses, the prosecution, the dream team, what are they doing 20 years later? So once I left the DA's office, I said, that's it. People send me emails to this day, damning me to hell. The families of the victims. Didn't you spot Simpson in a parking lot? I had my foot on the pedal, and I was revving, thinking I could, I could take him out. And O.J. Simpson himself. He doesn't want people to see him like he is right now. In the CNN Spotlight. The O.J. Simpson trial, where are they now? The bodies were found around midnight. A witness discovered the body of Nicole Brown Simpson. Simpson. Pro Football Hall of Famer O.J. Simpson is questioned in the death of his ex-wife. 20 years ago on June 17, 1994, Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson were brutally murdered. Nicole's sister, Denise Brown, will never forget that phone call. I hear this, this, this scream, this wail, this something that I had never heard before come out of my mother. And I go, what is going on? She goes, Nicole's dead. And I go, what? The chief suspect, O.J. Simpson, famous football star, and Nicole's former husband. Ron Goldman's sister, Kim, heard the news from her father, Fred. He said, did you hear the news? Did you hear about O.J. Simpson and Nicole Brown? I said, what, who are these people? What is happening? And, and then he said, you, Ron, Ron's dead. And I, I didn't understand right away, and then he repeated it again, and I just, I remember I was kind of spiraling. I went down to the floor. OJ, you there? Yep. The shocking case turned surreal when OJ went on the run. At approximately 10.15. Months later, the marathon trial of the century. Mr. Uh, Simpson, would you please stand and face the jury? And the acquittal that shocked the world. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation. Today, the victim's families still struggle to cope. I can still feel him and see him, and, and I still want to call. I still have to stop myself from grabbing the phone. It says raw and painful as it was 20 years ago. People ask me, you know, occasionally you'll get someone to say, you know, have you gotten closure? Is it over? Have you learned to live with it? And all of which is no. You don't learn to live with it. At one point, Kim even considered getting even with the man she believed killed her brother. Didn't you spot Simpson in a parking lot at some point? I did. Um, I had my foot on the pedal. I was right knuckling the steering wheel, and I was revving, thinking I could, I could take him out. I could, I'm the only one. There's nobody here. I could do this. I could do this. And then I thought of my dad and um, thought, I can't really do this because that's not who I am. Kim couldn't kill OJ, but she couldn't forgive him either. She's written a book about her struggle. The title of your book is Can't Forgive, My 20-Year Battle with O.J. Simpson. Why can't you forgive? I don't know how, and I don't know that I need to. There is a belief that if you don't forgive, therefore you're stuck, or that you live your life with anger, or that you're less than, or that in some way you can't find joy. And I, I think I'm doing okay with the way that I'm living my life and my process. As for Denise Brown, her coping process also took years to evolve. I just remember myself being so angry 
And it took me 13 years to get over that anger. And it's something that I just don't want to, I don't want to feel anymore. I want to be able to remember Nicole as we were. Though Denise knew Nicole wasn't always happy with OJ, she says she didn't know her sister was being physically abused until after she was dead. When did you first realize, oh, my sister is in an unhealthy, possibly dangerous situation? After I read her diaries, that's when I knew. I saw a picture of her when she was really young and she had the black eye. And she goes, isn't that terrific? She goes, they painted a black eye on me because he was doing a movie at the time. So I said, wow, that's really great. It looks like you have a black eye. And I threw it back in the drawer. I had no idea about domestic violence. No idea. Now she's using her sister's story as motivation to speak out against domestic violence. Two years ago, I decided to start a speakers bureau. And I thought, you know, there's so many incredible people out there speaking about domestic violence, sexual assault, mental health, uh, human trafficking, just wonderful, wonderful, passionate people. And I thought, okay, I'm go that's what I'm gonna do. Denise's speakers bring awareness and provide education to universities, nonprofits, and Fortune 500 companies. When you were at her funeral, did you say, I promise I'm gonna do right by you. I'm gonna do something. Well, I always said that I will continue to speak out and continue to have her remembered for the rest of my life. I want the victims of this to be remembered. I want Ron and Nicole to be remembered. Coming up, the trial of the century. Where are the characters from the real life soap opera now? I became famous, not rich. That trail of blood is devastating proof of his guilt. From the second the courtroom drama unfolded, viewers were hooked. This was the first wall-to-wall -wall televised trial, the perfect soap opera. I'm Jim Moran, Los Angeles court is once again in session. Reporter Jim Murray covered the trial for CNN. It was something that you had to watch. You have a football hero, you have a beautiful blonde ex-wife, you have a good-looking young man who's killed. If you wrote this drama, no one would believe it. A real-life murder mystery that preempted TV soaps. That objection is sustained. The bearded judge, Lance Ito, with those signature specs, just one of a bizarre set of characters who became a household name. You couldn't cast this trial any better. I heard a thumping noise. Kato Kalin, the slacker house guest with that hair we could never forget, was the trial's breakout star. When they asked me at the checkout stand if I have two forms of ID, I would say the star of the Inquirer. You know, I got a lot of, you know, I know you from somewhere. Why do I know you? You look, you know, you look very familiar. Limo driver Alan Park co-starred. I saw a figure come into the uh, entranceway. Park was hounded by the press and fled L.A. after the verdict. I never, ever was going to let this change my life, not who I was and who I was going to be. And I wasn't going to sell my story. He left the limo biz and today has twin sons and is a train conductor in Sacramento, California. All the players became instant celebrities. Today, my DA Gil Garcetti appointed attorney Marsha Clark Simpson. to lead the prosecution. He seeks to protest his innocence and yet not allow anyone to ask him any questions. We wondered, who was she? Was she single? Was she married? What's her life like? Clark became a tabloid fixture when the country became obsessed with her hair and makeup. We saw Marsha Clark's makeover on television, which is what made it so dramatic. Wow, what happened? Marsha did her hair. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. A generation before, Marsha was on the Brady Bunch. Our generation, she's in the O.J. Simpson trial. It was one of the only murder cases she ever lost. Clark left law after Simpson's acquittal, penning crime novels, and along with her books came an even newer look. 
We have the problem put in place with the level on his hand. Clark's sidekick, co-prosecutor Chris Darden, had one of the most dramatic scenes of the trial. Can we ask him to straighten his fingers and extend them into the glove as one normally might put a glove on? I object yes. to this statement by counsel. A move that in the end backfired. Like a slow motion disaster movie for the prosecution. The trial finished off Darden's career as a prosecutor, and today he has his own law firm, and like Clark, writes crime thrillers. The glove debacle gave lead defense attorney Johnny Cochran a chance to steal the show. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Cochran was just one of Simpson's A-list defense lawyers, dubbed the Dream Team. It was a nightmare team. Attorney Alan Dershowitz got a lot of flack for defending Simpson. My mother was furious at me. She called it the OJ, OJ phase of my life. Famed attorney F. Lee Bailey pinned LAPD's Mark Furman in a fierce cross-exam. You say on your oath that you have not addressed any black person as a Once he said, never in 10 years have I ever used the N-word, I knew we had him. They did have him and the case. But after the trial, Furman, the most vilified cast member, landed on his feet. He left the LAPD and became a best-selling author and Fox News crime analyst. We are, all of us, profoundly disappointed with the verdict. DA Gil Garcetti was criticized for losing the case. He lasted one more term and then took a giant leap. My focus is on photography and other things not related to the criminal justice system or even to the law. Just look at those eyes. The former DA is now a globe-trotting photographer with critically acclaimed exhibits and pictures published in six books. But Garcetti hasn't strayed too far from the law or politics. He became a script consultant for TV dramas like The Closer. I'll be investigating your victim for murder and you can leave. And his son is now the mayor of Los Angeles. OJ's dream team took many different paths. 20 years later, do people still come up to you and say, you're the guy? People send me emails to this day damning me to hell. But Dershowitz says the hate didn't hurt his career. Today, he's still a prominent defense attorney, a Harvard law professor, and author. F. Lee Bailey fell from grace more than a decade ago. I did get the blame for the acquittal. I got punished not as much as O.J. After the trial, he was disbarred for misconduct in a client's case. That's it. I have no further desire to practice law. This letter was written. OJ pal Robert Kardashian, who had a supporting role on the defense, battled cancer and died in 2003 at the age of 59. It was only years later that most Americans discovered that he was the father of Kim and company. His greatest legacy, perhaps, his daughter Kim, seen on the arm of Kanye or on reality TVs Keeping Up with the Kardashians. But it was America's favorite house guest who dominated reality TV in the early 2000s. Get yourself and get off the bus right now! Who wants to look like that? Kato Kalin embraced his instant fame, taking parts in Celebrity Boot Camp. I'm shooting, hold on. Give me my reality show and the very fitting house guest, which never did get off the ground. Hi, I'm TV's Kato Kalin. And I'm dropped off in the middle of nowhere with suitcase and no money. I have to knock on doors to say, hey, I'm TV's Kato Kalin. Can I live here? Do you remember what happened to OJ when you lived with him? <laughs> Today, Kalin has his own online interview show. And speaking of credits, you have a new song out, right? Yes, I do. And is launching a clothing line. The media called me the biggest slacker in the world and the free freeloader. And I said, you know what? Embrace your inner slacker. Kato Couch Potato. So we came up with Kato Potato line. A collection of loungewear, complete with pockets for snacks and a remote control. Was there ever a time where you thought, whoa, 
this is because of a grisly double murder that this kind of came to me. And I became famous overnight from a terrible thing. I get it. I know that. But that's the cards that I was dealt. I'm playing it. A cast of characters played their part. Lives changed forever. And the trial of the century now cemented in pop culture. I always think that my epitaph's going to read my 15 minutes are up. And no, but I do. <laughs> Coming up, OJ's life behind bars. He's very depressed right now. More depressed now than ever. We, the jury in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. OJ Simpson may have been found not guilty, but his courtroom dramas were far from over. Even before the verdict, the Goldman and Brown families filed a lawsuit against him. The civil uh, wrongful death suit is our only opportunity at justice. I was struck by O.J. Simpson in the civil case. He was so cavalier and so casual. And he looked at me one day and said, look, look at her. And he was talking about a woman who was in the courtroom. Like, wow, isn't she good looking? And I thought, you're kidding me. It all culminated in another highly anticipated verdict. Thank God. Finally, we got a court to acknowledge the truth. He killed Ron and Nicole. In total, the jury slapped OJ with $33.5 million in damages. The juice had his freedom, but not much else. He had to find a way to make money so he went on tour. They said, you cannot get him a gig anywhere in the United States. Even OJ himself said, there's no way you're going to get me a gig. But Norman Pardo did. As OJ's manager, he booked him at everything from hip hop shows to autograph signings. He was on stage, they were chanting his name. And, you know, you know, he broke down, he even said, because they were yelling, OJ, 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 juice, juice, you know, and they wouldn't stop. The public's fascination with OJ wasn't just confined to planned appearances. In Philadelphia, I put him in a Rolls Royce convertible. I said, let's just put the top down. We're going to put him down South Street and see what would happen. It was like taking the president through town. And Pardo caught those moments on tape. Since I've been in Miami, I've gone out with a Cuban girl, a Venezuelan girl, and a white girl. Unguarded scenes of OJ that are included in a just released documentary. It just ended up that this is footage nobody's ever seen of him that's just regular guy, not in a suit and a tie, just sitting there. <laughs> In his never-ending quest to raise money, O.J. would try everything from an ill-fated book titled If I Did It to selling his own sports memorabilia. And it would be those dealings with memorabilia that would finally put him behind bars. At a hotel casino in Las Vegas, collectibles dealer and former Simpson friend Bruce Fromong set up in room 1203. He prepared to sell OJ's items he says he owned to an unnamed buyer. There were signed photographs, there were some footballs, there were three ties that he had worn during the um, trial. Fromong had just spread the items out on the bed when all hell broke loose. That's when they came busting through the door. There was no knock. Fromong saw a group of men, two with guns. And the last person through the door was O.J. Simpson. A third party who set up the encounter secretly recorded everything on audio tape. I knew I'd been, you know, set up by somebody. Oh, there's nobody on this. Oh, 
And my first thought was, OJ, how could you be so stupid? We did jury in the Bob and Title case. 13 years to the day after he was acquitted of murder, OJ Simpson would be convicted of 12 charges and sentenced to a maximum of 33 years in prison. Mr. Simpson, go ahead and stand. Yes, Your Honor, I, I stand before you today. Uh, sorry. I definitely figured that he would get three years, maybe five years. Nine and a half to 33, definitely overkill. The Goldman family, however, felt justice was long overdue. Did you really send him a card saying, welcome to your new home? Mm -hmm. And then, actually, when they said that he was a diabetic, and I wanted to send him a care package of, of cookies. cookies and sugar. and It's all the fun we can have here. <laughs> And those who know Simpson say prison has been hard on the formerly gregarious superstar. He's overweight. He doesn't have a smile anymore. He doesn't want people to see him like he is right now. So we talk and that's that. Pardo says Simpson's favorite pastimes in prison are fantasy football and coaching the prison's baseball team. He doesn't feel threatened. People in there are nice to him. He's still OJ. Just this month, O.J. filed his latest appeal and is awaiting a decision. In the meantime, he remains behind bars until his next possible parole in 2017.